So um, we are recording this info session so that it can be made available for um, artists that are interested in this opportunity who weren't able to join us uh, this evening and who are not going to be available to join us on November 6th for our in-person info session. This recording will be made available on the uh, LP's website after the November 6th info session. So it should be used as a tool for you to reference as you're filling out your application. And of course, you should feel free to um, email us at info at laundromat project, which we will share that email at the end of this info session um, if you have additional questions that come up. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, a lot of this information is already on our website, but you know it's helpful to have it said um, and then obviously create a space for people to ask questions. So um, this opportunity is coming through a partnership between the Sugar Hill Children's Museum of Art and Storytelling and the Laundromat Project. Um, the museum will be opening next year, um, and we're all very excited uh, for it to be um, a place for children uh, ages three to eight and their families to um, engage in art and conversation and, and programming that will be uh, presented at the museum. Um, this residency opportunity is one of several initiatives that the museum is um, organizing in partnership with other organizations and um, entities in Harlem. So we're really excited to be a part of that. Um, we, as some of you might know, have a residency program that is offered between June and October uh, each year. Um, and it takes place, it's artists that live in Harlem Bedside Hunts Point um, that are selected to realize a public art project that is participatory um, and uh, a, a sort of responsive to their neighborhood in these three neighborhoods. And it takes place in a laundromat. This opportunity is obviously very different in that um, the recipient of this uh, award will get 450 square feet of um, studio space where they can make their work. Um, and they will also receive a $7,000 honorarium um, over seven months. So while our residency also offers an honorarium and production budget, it obviously is different in the sort of site location um, and sort of the, the requirements that are uh, needed to fulfill the, the parameters of the residency are also different. So, um, so we talked about, you know, the fact that you get this space um, and it's a private studio, it'll be sort of towards the back of the museum. Um, it, you know, within the museum, there will also be gallery spaces where exhibitions will be happening and also um, museum staff offices. Um, we talked about the seven thousand dollar honorarium, which again, it doesn't um, it doesn't include production budget. So anything you can use that honorarium however you decide. You know whether you want to just use it all for materials or you want to use it to pay you know personal expenses. That's it's completely up to you. Um, and then there's a possibility that um, whoever is selected for this opportunity will be able to earn additional income by leading workshops um, for museum patrons. So um, I think Lauren could probably speak a little bit more to that, um, but again, it's a possibility. So the, really the, the, the major benefits are the studio space and the honorarium. So um, artist, uh, artists uh, should consider this opportunity if they have um, a demonstrated creative practice as a visual artist. Um, and so this should be documented in your work samples. We really can't stress enough the importance of work samples. Um, it is really the visual narrative of your work. So you really should spend time um, selecting work that you feel rep best represents your ability to work at, in your, at your highest capacity as an artist. Please don't leave your work samples as an afterthought. Um, often panelists will go directly to the work samples and then read the narrative, but it is often used as a sort of informing visual sort of element to everyone, to people's applications, um, as it has been our observation. So really sort of spend time, um, you know, looking through what work samples make the most sense for this application. Um, you know, uh, artists who have experience working with children's ages three to eight and their families um, should consider this opportunity. And um, they should also it's not necessary that they, you know, be trained educators working with this particular age population. Um, it is an intergenerational population when you think about uh, children within this age range and their families. But it, it's really just an artist that feels comfortable engaging this age, um, or these ages, I should say. Also, um, this opportunity is great for someone who ha has an understanding or can relate to the sort of the demographics, location, or history of the Sugar Hill um, neighborhood um, or its communities. Um, and so that should also be demonstrated in your work samples um, and or the answers to the questions that are um, included in the application. 
And so it's not to say that you have to live in Sugar Hill. You don't have to live in Sugar Hill. You don't ever have had to live in Sugar Hill. Like that you don't have to have, sorry, you don't have to have um, a history of living in the neighborhood, but you should understand, you know, the neighborhood. You should have a familiarity with it in some capacity or um, communities that live and work there. Um, and so artists also should be able to attend staff trainings um, to ensure the most successful interaction happens between um, museum staff, contractors, and all the visitors. So um, this is really something that's going to be determined, the schedule for which it's going to be determined once the museum opens. But it's just to say that, you know, working as an artist in residence in this capacity is not going to just be being in your studio and um being in your studio. There are sort of other things that are connected to it and you shouldn't expect to be at a meeting every week, but it will, it will mean that you need to like, you know, adapt your schedule to meet the um, meeting requirements for anybody who's basically going to be engaging with museum visitors so that the, you know, everyone can ensure that that experience is going to be of the highest quality. Um, so you should also be accustomed uh, and or open to entertaining conversations with curious museum visitors about your studio practice and process. Um, so the way that this um, residency is structured, it's similar to if you're familiar with the Museum of Art and Design's studio program or residency program. Um, they actually have um, a period of time where the public is open to come to inside of the artist studio and have a conversation with them about what it is that they're making or about their practice as a whole. Uh, and so it's similar in that way. It, you will not have to have open studio hours for the majority of the time that you're in your studio, but there will be a set number of hours, um, 15 actually to be specific, um, where you will or across it per, sorry, per week um, where you will have to have your studio open so that you can um, engage with museum visitors. Um, you should be at least 21 years of age to participate in this program. Um, and you should be able to, like I said, commit the 15 hours per week um, between February uh, 2015 and September 2015. Um, sorry, to be in your studio and then to also have um, some some face-to-face -face time uh, with the public. Um, so this is again a sort of reiteration of what I just said, but you should be able to participate in studio visits, or sorry, studio open studio events. So um, the museum, once the public programming schedules have been confirmed, will say, you know, we're having an event. Can you have your studio open so that families can come and see what it is that you're making? So you're you're very much a part of the fabric of the museum. Um, it's not to say that you're a rogue artist in like the back corner who's getting a free space. Like you're there to to be a part of everything that's happening and be a part of the community of the museum. Um, and you so you should also not be currently in, uh, enrolled in any sort of college or graduate school program or other degree bearing program. Um, you know to really be able to fulfill the time requirements of being in your studio. Um, it's going to plus whatever else you're working on, project wise or work wise. It's going to be very hard to to do that. And so we're asking that anybody who is interested in this opportunity is not currently enrolled in any of these programs. Um, so our selection criteria, um, these questions are again listed on our website. There is a downloadable link and I'll go to the website after um, this PowerPoint to show you exactly where that is located. Um, but there is a downloadable link that is a PDF where all of these questions and all of this information is saved so that you can um, reference it as you are filling out your applications. So we're really looking to um, select artists through three sort of uh, filters, artistic excellence, comfort working with children, and familiarity with Sugar Hill. So um, does the artist demonstrate a command of the mediums that are presented in the work samples? Does their work sample, do their work samples uh, illustrate technical strength? Is the applicant's work conceptually strong? Is the candidate a visual artist? So um, of course, if you are a visual artist that includes you know, performance in your work, that's fine. But you know there needs to be some sort of um, visual component there. Um, this opportunity is not ideal um, or not tailored to artists that are working in a performing arts capacity. Um, does this um, applicant have uh, work samples or a CV that demonstrates a competency and comfort with working with children ages three to eight years old and their families? So, um, you know, maybe demonstrating that is, you know, showing a work sample that 
shows you actually engaging with these with these age populations, or perhaps it's documented on your CV that you happen to be an educator um, in a sort of in working in the DOE system or as a teaching artist. Um, maybe you're just like an authentic, you know, community teaching artist where you don't necessarily work with. Um, any institution uh, working with this age population, but this is something that you happen to be doing in your spare time. In some way, um, through um, your answers or your work samples, you should demonstrate a competency with working with children of this age range and their families. Um, and will your work resonate with museum patrons, um, specifically children's age, children ages three to eight? So that, again, this is a children's museum. So. Um, the work that is submit or artists that are submitting work should also consider, you know, what is um, content that will resonate. It's not to say that anybody's trying to censor the work that you're doing. It's just to say that there, it should be relevant in theme um, and or material. And so what is the uh, applicant's familiarity uh, with Sugar Hill? Uh, do they demonstrate an understanding about Sugar Hill as a neighborhood, its history, and or the communities that live and work there? So that's really very big. That's very general. Um, it's a broad stroke. Um, and so if you can sort of connect to any one of those things or all of those things, then, um, you know, your application would obviously be um, judged in a sort of strong light given these selection criteria um, given the selection criteria. So, um, and also would the applicants work resonate with um, Sugar Hills neighbors? So um, there's actually also um, a section on the PDF uh, that we have available on our website. And that is, does this applicant's work sort of relate to, respond to, um, or advance sort of cultural preservation, um, uh, participation, community engagement in some capacity. So that is also an area that will be um, included um, in the selection criteria. And so if you consider your work, you know, something that is, that is sort of solitary practice and that doesn't necessarily, um, it, 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 people don't necessarily need to be there to complete it in, in some capacity, then, um, you know, this op you should still consider this, uh, this opportunity, but obviously be some of the selection criteria, you know, the panelists will be looking for work that does that in some capacity. Um, so your, the application materials, you should be prepared to um, have a CV or resume on hand to upload to the application, which we will look through um, before the end of this info session. Um, have work samples. And so we have basically three sort of areas where work samples or three ways that work samples can be submitted. One is through um, submitting up to eight uh, still images of your work. And you'll also have space to include a description of that, of the work that you're submitting. Um, you'll also have an option to uh, submit, I believe it's two audio or video um, clips and a description to uh, for those works. Or you can select the combination, which is, I believe, four still images and two um, audio video uh, clips. So, you know, those audio video clips can be made available through Vimeo or YouTube. And if they're password protected, there's a space on the application where you can provide that password. Um, there are five application questions, which we will review very quickly before the end of the info session. Um, you will also have to um, submit an artist statement, which is limited to 100 words and also a bio that's also limited to 100 words. And then you will also finally have to um, provide name and contact information for two professional references. So it can be anybody that's worked with you in a professional capacity, whether they were um, a colleague or a supervisor or um, you know anybody that you feel can sort of best represent how you work in a professional space. So um, our timeline is such, uh, we are currently in the application window. Uh, so applications are available on the website. The link is available on the website for you to complete. There is an option to start drafting your answers and save them for later um, if you care to do that. Um, we are currently having an info session now and we'll have the in-person info session on November 6th. Um, we will go through the artist selection process in December. So the selection process is going to be um, a two-part process where shortlisted candidates will actually have a group interview um, with younger, younger people. Um, and they will do sort of um, uh, a, not a teaching, but like a demonstration of a, of a lesson. And then um, finalists will then come in for an in-person interview. And then we will announce um, 
the artists. We will pro officially announce the artists in January, but notify the selected artists in December. Um, and then we will sort of organize sort of a welcoming meeting uh, between the artist laundromat project staff and uh, staff from Sugar Hill Children's Museum. Um, in January, and the residency will officially begin uh, in February and go through September. So something to note is that because the museum hasn't opened yet and they are, um, you know, constantly having to negotiate building sort of details that are out of their control, um, there are some things, some dates that will potentially be shifting just based on permits and the logistics that are related to building a new building. Um, so I think Lauren could probably speak to that a bit more. But um, we're going to, this is the, sorry, I'm just putting up the slide where you can record our email and number. Um, and I'll leave that up for a couple of moments um, and let Lauren respond to anything that she feels is necessary um, to clarify anything. And then we will go to the LP website to walk through um, the application. Lauren, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, I think that um, the construction date is, uh, it's a really tentative set of circumstances, but we really anticipate being able to move in by February. The exact date in February, um, you know, is not clear yet, but we were pretty solid on it being February as our move-in date. And should anything change, we would keep our, you know, finalists and our, our you know, chosen artists uh, up to speed, you know, and make sure that they're not, you know, shortchanged at all of their studio time. We adjust the, uh, the timeline appropriately. Great. All right, so I'm gonna just exit out of the PowerPoint and um, pull up the website. And you'll all notice um, while I'm pulling up the website that there is a chat, there should be a chat, um, dialog box at the bottom of your control panels. And so that is where we will be collecting questions. Yvette is um, keeping an eye on that window. And so we will be able to address questions at the end um, of the info session. If you have them, feel free to write them in the moment and then we'll just come back to them. Okay, so I don't know if everybody was following how I traveled to this page. Um, basically, I was at the homepage of the Laundromat Project site and I clicked um, the second, this is the easiest way to get to it at this juncture, um, the second slide on the uh, slider on the, on the homepage. So it's the artist apply now um, and there's a picture of the interior of part of the museum. Um, and then you scroll down and this is the, um, the guidelines document that I was telling you about. So it's a PDF where all the information that we discussed um, is available. The, there is a link to the uh, application. And there's also an FAQ here. So if you do have any questions, you can first um, look here and you feel like it's not being answered, um, then you can give us a call or send us an email. So we tried to um, project which questions people might ask, and, and we hope that we've answered them there. But of course, if we haven't, please let us know. And we're happy to also update the FAQ to um, reflect um, any sort of real questions. So um, once you're on, when you're coming back to the website, um, if you click the apply now button, this is the application. This is the um, save my progress for and resume later button that I mentioned earlier. Um, there's also, you know, cross hyperlinked uh, text that connects back to that PDF that I just showed you. Um, let me just show you what happens when you save, when you click save my progress for later, you'll put in your email, a password, and you'll confirm that password. And then that information will get sent to whatever email you have um, included in this top field. Um, you should save that email um, so that you can access your application later. Um, so, the instructions basically say you should consider drafting your responses um, in a sort of Word document or Google Docs or whatever word processing um, service you use or application you use, um, because this page you can't refresh it and it will it, while keeping it. Sorry, you can't refresh it. It won't. If you do, it won't retain that information. So you'll lose it. 
but it actually should give you a warning sign. Like, do you, are you sure you want to leave this page? So, um, that said, don't, don't do that. Just, just maybe draft it somewhere else and then just carry the answers over. So this first window is asking for just basic information, your first name and your address and uh, email. If you have a website, please share it. Um, this statement of commitment and understanding um, is just so that we know that you've read the guidelines and selection criteria and the FAQ for this program. Um, so you're saying, yes, I have read them um, and I understand what the program requires um, a commitment to be present in my studio, minimum of 15 hours, um, and then I have to go to you know relevant staff meetings um, and, and I need to participate in public programming at the museum. So here are the application questions. So you'll use this top section to sort of de select, you know, what is the genre of art making that you fall under or your work falls under rather. Um, every genre will be given equal consideration. Really, we're looking at work samples and the answers to your questions as they fulfill the selection criteria. So well, the first question is, what do you hope children will learn from engaging with your work? The second question is, please describe how your artistic practice reflects the relationship to the demographics, location, or history of the Sugar Hill neighborhood and its many communities. Um, what do you hope to accomplish with the seven-month residency? How will your work connect to museum patron, connect museum patrons to your creative practice? And you can sh use this space to you know, share what kinds of activities you envision leading during Open Studio or any other related public programs. So maybe Open Studio is you know, for you having conversations, um, or maybe it's also leading, um, you know, workshops that are related to the work that you're you're doing, or organizing a reading, or you know, organizing programming that is relevant to the themes and content of your work. Um, and then finally, this is a really fun one: How would you describe your work to a five-year-old? Um, so you'll use that area to do that. All of these um, questions have responses that are limited to 125 words. So that can either be really good news for you or maybe bad news if you're, you know, like, like to provide a lot of information. Um, it'll, you know, be an opportunity for you to sort of edit um, and really provide the strongest text to uh, illustrate um, your thoughts as they relate to the questions. So again, your artist statement and bio should be limited to 100 words and you will provide it, you know, in this window. And you'll see at the bottom that there is a counter so you can sort of keep track of things. Um, and then let's go scroll down. This is the section where you provide your references and you should provide um, what your relationship is to, to you, uh, whoever you're listing as a reference. And if they have an organization or a company, their uh, affiliation, you can include that here in their position, but it's not necessary if that is not the case. Um, you will upload your resume under the browse uh, button. And then here um, is where you will be able to select um, what, sorry, what kind of work samples you want to upload. So there are the three options that I mentioned, still images up to eight. Here you will provide, sorry, you will provide um, the image caption. So this is the title of the work and it should be labeled accordingly. Um, so title, date, media, dimensions, um, and year. And we'll add that. Uh, and then the description of the work. So this is the area where you can give context. Don't use this section to write an essay. Use this section to um, sort of judici judiciously select the words that will best reflect the work sample um, and allow a panelist to understand what it is that you've provided. But really, it's not the space to like extend the narrative of the questions that have been asked above. Um, this is um, the browse button that allows you to upload that uh, work sample. Um, and so we ask that work samples are labeled accordingly. So first name, underscore last name, and then the slide number. So examples have been provided below. Um, I'm going to show you very, just the audio video and then skip the combination because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's a combination of these two sections. So. The caption should go here um, using the same naming convention. Um, there should be a description, a link for where it can be found online, and a password if that's applicable. Um, you'll see that the video clip should be up to 10 minutes. Um, so that means that you should not upload 20 minute clips um, because it will just not position you in the best way for a panelist to really be able to get to the meat of your work. Um, 
Finally, there's a statistical information section. This is optional. This just better allows us to understand how you heard about the opportunity and sort of other demographics so that we can get a sense of who's applying for this opportunity. Um, and then that's it. And the next page will just allow you, when you press next, it'll allow you to review your answers before submitting them, and then you will press submit. That's it, actually. Um, that's, that's the run of it. So um, we're checking the questions section, and... I don't see any questions. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you guys have questions um, that you would like to have answered. But if you do, you should feel free to type them. So we'll just give a moment for that. Um, actually, while you're and while you're thinking about if you have a question to ask, um, Lauren, if you could just quickly clarify um, uh, the open studio requirements and the 15 hour weekly in your studio requirement. You'll have, every artist needs to be in their studio for 15 hours a week. And then right. maybe just if you could explain a little bit about the, if there is a difference or if there are additional hours that will accompany these 15 hours to be um, available for sort of open studio or public programming. Right, I think the 15 hours is just a given and it doesn't include uh, the uh, occasional staff meetings, which would not start until about April, being that we are set to open at this hour with the, the schedule that we have uh, in June, right? So April, we'd start having training artists, teaching artists and, and staff uh, grow. And we would like for the artists to be present for you know the one or two meetings that occur before they open, um, just to kind of deal with just with the, the various ways that we're all on the same page with greeting and in, embracing our guests, you know, um, from those with special needs to, uh, you know, uh, just what it means to, to talk about um, any of the exhibitions that are on hand, where the restrooms are, so that we're all on the same page with those types of, of details. And then, um, you know, I don't think that the open studio also is included in that 15-hour commitment. And I, I think, you know, uh, across the board, lots of artist residencies require about 20 hours a week. So this, is, um, this isn't really uh, when we were trying to figure out how many uh, a basic requirement should be this this should not be too much of a strain and that 15 hours can be accomplished in even like three days a week right um and the access uh we, we're really uh working for 24 hour access to the studios but it's, it's still contingent upon kind of in this inaugural rollout year uh you know, how things are coordinated with our security staff, um, you know, but the goal is to give you 24 hour access uh, to the site uh, and, and to your to your studio, essentially. Anything else? Am I missing anything? No, I think that was good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't see any questions. So <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Maybe there are some. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So do we accept PDFs? Um, there's one question. Do we accept PDFs um, of work samples? Um, and the person that asked this question, feel free to uh, clarify. Um, I'm assuming that that is the context. Um, the answer to the question is yes. Um, we we have and we can. Uh, we prefer JPEGs, but PDFs are totally fine. Um, the uh, requirements, the sort of pixel requirements, I believe are on the website or on the, um, I believe they're on the application section. If they're not, they probably, I think it's like eight by, t no bigger than maybe four by six and 800 by 600 pixels. I might be wrong, but um, I'm gonna check um, after the info session and if it's not there, I will add it. Um, if you're sending a PDF though, then you know obviously it will be uh, limited to sort of eight by 10 page. That said, you shouldn't um, jam like 10 pictures on that one PDF. We're mm -hmm. really looking for eight work samples. Of course, if it's a project that is, um, participatory in nature, then really there's a sort of a gray area there. And you can, you know, say like these four images are part of this event. Then the event is that one work. Like there, there, I, I think some, some gray areas, but it's just to say that you shouldn't be submitting like 10 distinct and unique works on one PDF. Um, that one PDF should be, or, or JPEG, it should be related to, um, 
one work. I'm going to take this <laughs> now. <laughs> okay. What kind of support, here are more questions. What kind of support will be there, will there be during events? And will the artists be expected to engage museum guests alone? I think that, you know, ideally with our open studios, uh, you are expected to, you know, stand in your studio and, you know, be whoever it is, be gracious and, you know, host company, you know, um, you know, children, parents with questions, it's your show. Uh, but I think when we are asking for engagement with, um, with uh, children and workshops that we would love for you to oversee, uh, which would be determined upon, you know, like in January, like what is feasible, what, what works best for you, uh, there would be teaching artist staff. Okay. Yeah. I hope that answers the question. We're going back. Uh, <laughs> lots of questions. Um, so the other question is, uh, where in the building is the studio space? So I think I mentioned it. It's basically, and it's hard to obviously visualize this um, because the museum's not open yet for tours, but basically when you enter the museum, you'll go sort of downstairs and then the studio is actually all the way in the back. So it's not like you'll be the first um, space that anybody sees when they walk in. Um, they will have to have see, gone through the galleries um, and past the administrative offices and the, the artist studio is at the far right back of the building. And um, let's see where, yeah, was that? Okay. So we talked about um, PDFs, but in context to books, um, that's a really great question. I would actually, you know, just, and I'm bringing my own personal experience as a panelist and I will not be a panelist on this, um, on this panel, but I would say that it would probably be in your best interest to sort of include an excerpt um, and provide a description that creates an overview of the project because, um, if a, most people will submit sort of eight work samples um, that are sort of eight distinct work samples of projects, if you submit a, a booklet that is maybe 40 pages, that's it's a lot of content and it's not going to give the panelists an opportunity to really spend time um, with your individual work samples um, in the given giving each applicant that same amount of time. So. Um, I would I would consider sort of shaving it down if it is a booklet and if it's a booklet of only you know a few pages like it's really a, a quite a small booklet then sure um, upload it but maybe make it you know a work sample for the middle or the end um, and include um, images um, or other representations of your work that also tell that story so it really is sort of something that's not auxiliary, but sort of supplemental to what I, what you've sort of visually built through the other samples. I appreciate everybody's patience and understanding about our screen sharing. We did a lot of tests, but you know, um, again, now that I've gone through this um, webinar, this recording will be made available online, and um, we will also we can also make the PowerPoint available online as well. But again, it's it is a rearticulation of everything that's on the website. Okay. Um, and so if an artist is interested in connecting with local schools or community groups so that they can uh, visit um, and, and work on projects, is that something that the museum would be interested in supporting? So I'll let um, Lauren answer that question. Repeat that one more time. Just Sorry. is the... If, yes. if an artist is interested in connecting with local school um, or community yes. groups so that they can visit, um, so that those people, those folks can visit to work on projects, right. is that something that the museum will be interested in? Absolutely. I think we're already in the process of trying to have direct connections with, you know, um, schools in uh, Upper Manhattan, the South Bronx, uh, Inwood, uh, you, know, you know, Northern Manhattan. So that is already in the works. But if there is any particular school that you're really uh, hoping to connect with that we don't have yet, by all means, we'll work hard to facilitate that. Okay. Um, so there was another question, um, will we consider mid-career or established artists as well as emerging? And the answer to that question is absolutely. Um, really um, yes. look, look to the selection criteria as the guide for how artists will be sort of um, scored for this opportunity. And it really, it has nothing to do with um, sort of length of time or professional sort of accolades that yeah. one has received over the course of their life as an artist. It really is, we're trying to find um, the artists that will make the best match and sort of fit into the fabric of the museum while making their practice accessible to museum visitors. So um, 
by all means, however you fall under those criteria, feel free. Um, there is something else that, that should be mentioned, um, and I believe it's in the gui PDF guidelines, I think. Um, for your CV, it's not necessary that you have an exhaustive exhibition history. Again, so just coming back to that point of like, where am I in my career? Am I, you know, a strong candidate if I don't have five solo shows or whatever. Um, so the answer to that question is you should, again, feel encouraged to apply absolutely no matter where you are in your artistic career. Right. Um, right. Okay. So, and then uh, could you elaborate, uh, Lauren, on the kind of support that is provided at events? So that was a question from earlier. Um, would you be able to elaborate on that kind of support again that's available um, to the artists during events? Yeah, during events and as particularly uh, workshops and you know engagement where you're leading a workshop, we will have teaching artists on ha on on hand. We hope to also have uh, bilingual teaching artists as well because this is there are lots of populations that come speaking different languages, um, primarily Spanish. So we hope to have teaching artists adept in that. If you're not an artist who's um, you know adept in Spanish. Um, and then, you know, it just really, it's kind of like, you know, depending on how many people show up, we'll determine how many additional teaching artist staff we have. But I think we also, uh, you know, these workshops will be limited. You know, it's not like you're expected to lead the workshop and then, you know, run around to each, you know, uh, child's kind of project to, to be the only one in the room, uh, you know, wrangling all of those entities. There will be help. So another question is, will the artist keep all artwork and or copyrights to their work? I think uh, artwork, yeah, what you make, we're, we're, we are here to support the production of new work. There is no, um, you know, I can tell you up front that there is no expectation for us to keep anything. I mean, we really just want to be able to, um, you know, f help facilitate the production of new work and to give uh, children and, you know, families and visitors uh, a sneak peek into an artist's, you know, current process. You know, and I think, you know, the only expectation that we have is that, you know, you are available to showing this new work in your open studio, you know, kind of final commitment that happens in either August or September, just, you know, just, just what, what is the result of your time here? Um, so there are two questions um, that are uh, just about the same. Um, one was, does the studio have um, windows? And the other one, is there any natural light in the studio space? And, right, yeah. We, oh, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Please yeah. go ahead. Please. Yeah, we uh, we do have natural light available there. Even though there are no direct windows for direct access to sunlight hitting the work, it is um, it is a room with you know three concrete walls and then one wall full of windows that I, I'm pretty sure will have like a shade so that you have your privacy, uh, you know, throughout the duration of the residency. But that window leads to a, a pretty huge hallway with a lot of skylight. And uh, so there is access to natural light, but it is not like there is access to a view of the street and the light that comes with something like that. Um, and then the final question is, do we have to submit a specific project to complete during the residency or can we submit samples of past works? I'm happy to answer that. If you have immediate thoughts um, that come to mind, Lauren, please feel free. Oh, go ahead. Um, so no, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the answer to the question is no, you don't need to have a specific project, but there is that question in the application that says, or asks, you know, what are you looking to accomplish, um, during your seven months? So if there is a pro if you say, well, I'm looking to accomplish this particular project, then it would be in your best interest to probably include work samples that, um, illustrate that project or sketches for that project. I wouldn't use all of your sort of work sample real estate to spend time illustrating that project or, um, right providing sort of breadcrumbs to it. You want to also use that space to provide or give panelists an understanding of what your sort of body of work is um, and so that they can get a better sense of you as a maker and as a creative person. Um, but if you say, I'm just using that as an example, if you say that I want to work on a project, then back that up also with uh, a work, you know, a slide or two or um, a video sort of sketch that illustrates that. Um, it, but again, it's not a requirement at all. You can just say, I'm wanting to use a space. Maybe I'm looking to sort of expand this particular body of work. And then again, if you're making reference to bodies of work, then give the panelists um, an opportunity to see what those bodies of work 
risks are um, if you're looking to do more than one or if you're even if you are just um, mentioning one. But again, it's not a requirement. Um, so uh, sorry. Yeah, we answered that one already. So, um, so yeah, I hope that that answers the question. Oh, um, let's see. Oh, okay. Just, we're just revisiting our log of questions and making sure that we have answered them all. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. We're just going to scroll down to the bottom. I think that's it. Oh, do projects need to incorporate community participation? in the production or concept of the art. So um, the answer to that question um, is that, again, you know, thinking, if you think about what the objective is of the artist in, within the museum, um, and that is, you know, an artist that is going to create sort of another space of learning and experience for museum patrons. And so um, it's not, it's, I, I don't want to say hard and fast, you know, every pro every artist applying for this opportunity needs to make sure that um, they incorporate community participation. But let's actually go to, um, I'm going to close out of uh, this PDF and go to the PDF of the guidelines. So here, this, this bullet that says, and this is the one we will add this to our um, PowerPoint, but it says artists, uh, this, I, this opportunity is ideal for artists who are not just interested in art for art's sake, but who intend for their creative practice to bring about social justice, cultural equity, cooperation, or cultural preservation. So that's really the only sort of bullet that I can pull out um, from what we have recorded here that might speak to that question. But again, it's, um, you know, it's not it doesn't say in that bullet community participation per se, but obviously the, the strongest artist for this opportunity is one that um, whose work rather is accessible to all the age populations that we talked about, whose work um, will be sort of relevant to the age populations and communities that live in Sugar Hill. I live and work in Sugar Hill. So um, you can sort of determine um, if that is you uh, and if community participation helps you do that. Do not force community participation because a forced participation-based project is not, you know, going to, you know, you, you can tell the forced, the forced nature of community participation. So don't feel compelled to include that if you feel like that will somehow make your application stronger. Um, there was one other question. Should we submit samples from one body of work or several? Um, you should give... Um, you should give the can hear you. Yeah. Sorry. So should I repeat that? It says, should we submit samples from one body of work or several? Yeah. Um, and you should again, you should give the panel a sense of what you're what you make. And so a, a way to do that is not just, you know, submitting one body of work. I would encourage you to use the the real estate to include a couple to maybe three bodies of work um, if you feel like the, the images that you, if this is, if you're using the still image um, option, but um, if you feel like the images that you have are visually strong, it really can um, convey the story about your work um, and, and, and why you make it, or, you know, just gives a really strong representation of it, then, you know, maybe consider submitting two to three bodies of work. You really just want, you want the panelists to sort of look at your application, read your answers, look at your work samples and go, okay, this artist, you know, has a really sort of strong art artistic ability and also um, is responding to the selection criteria, the questions that are under the selection criteria. Um, I know that it's very vague. <laughs> um, uh, and it obviously it's specific to, um, it's specific to your work. Uh, in, you know, in the past, uh, for our residency at the laundromat project, we have made ourselves available for, um, applicants to send in answers in advance because we don't participate on those panels either. So we can be objective. Um, and we provide, you know, very quick feedback depending on the demand. Um, we are considering opening up sort of application, um, sort of technical workshops or not workshops, but, um, sort of consultations and people will be available, will be available to pretend, depending on the demand, um, available to sort of answer or sort of review your application to kind of just give you that, um, sort of third party, 
uh, perspective. So this is something that we've talked about. It's something that we do for our residency. And again, depending on the demand, we're, we're considering doing that again. So if you're interested in that, shoot us an email um, and we will obviously follow up. Um, there was another um, question. Do we have to submit a specific product? No, we answered that already. Okay. Who will be on the panel? Great question. Mm -hmm. So it will be um, museum staff um, and the, and board members, um, and then a couple of just arts professionals that we obviously can't um, reveal uh, before the panel convenes. So it'll be, um, again, museum staff, uh, board members, and a couple of arts professionals. Okay, I think that's it, for real. Um, um, so we hope that you enjoyed this info session. Um, and again, we'll, you know, have it on our website after the November 6th, um, in-person info session. If you want to come and meet us in person, um, that information is available on the Eventbrite page where, um, that you use to register for this info session. Um, so you, again, if you have any questions that you weren't able to ask here, you should feel free to drop us a line at info at launchingmapproject.org or give us a call at 718-574-0798. I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Great. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Yay. Bye. Bye. Oops. Wait a minute.